I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Check out what it looks like outside my house today. It is super rainy, perfect day to do some indoor flying. And if you're watching this video, the chances are you're looking for something that is gonna be a great indoor flyer for the winter because most everywhere it's the rainy season and it's snowing outdoors in a lot of places already. Minnesota's getting snow and Wisconsin, all those Northern states are getting it. But uh, here in the South, we get a lot of rain. So. Today we're going to check out the QX65. It's different than the US65 and the UK65 that I showed on the channel yesterday. Those are brushless whoops. They're 1S brushless whoops. But today we're going to check out a brushed version. And I'm going to show you the big difference between brushless and brushed motors indoors. And we're going to talk about the characteristics of it and why a brushed setup might be better for you and cheaper as a new person getting into the hobby. A no-brainer to get into it around $50 for the QX65. Super cheap and uh, it actually flies a little more precise than its counterpart, a more popular US65 with brushless motors. And you know brushless motors are the big hot thing right now. 1S, 2S setups, 2S brushless whoops also being super popular but you really don't need to spend all that money to be able to fly indoors. You really don't. So I'm going to show you the difference between the two and it might actually change your mind as to which one of these you buy the 1S brushless whoop or the brushed version so you can save about $25 by getting the cheaper version and it might actually fly better indoors so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the flying and after some flying we'll come back and we'll take a little closer look at the QX65 the cheaper option to the US65 here we go
right guys, welcome back from the flight test. Did a little comparison between the US 65 that you see here and the QX 65. They're both Ishin models and they are different for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, that this is a brushed version, brushed motors as you can see there. They're a little bit taller. It sits just a little bit taller than the US 65. The US 65 is rocking those uh, brushless motors on there, and those were the Ishin. They were, I believe, there's 19,000 kV motors, um, super hopped up, 0603, even more upgraded than the UR series that uh, previously came out, UR UAV. That was everyone's favorite brushless whoop, but the newer version's out. Not quite as durable frame as you can see between this one, the QX 65, versus the US 65. I did break apart this frame in quite a few spaces. Uh, up in the front prop guards, the rear prop guard broke, a piece broke off the back, and I broke a piece off the bottom of the battery mount. So now the battery kind of flops around in there and I have to figure out how to fix that. Uh, mostly, you're probably gonna be fixing a lot of this stuff with a little bit of CA glue, or you can use shoe goop. That's a little bit uh, rubbery type of cement that you can put on here that would just help things kind of bounce off. But the, the biggest thing you're gonna do here is just buy a new frame because uh, at this point, this one's completely trashed. I could probably keep the canopy, but I'm gonna have to replace that entire frame. So that means moving all these components on a new frame, and that's after the first day of flying it. Um, and flying it as fast as I did around my house, there's, everyone has a lot of hardwood objects in their house, like table legs and um, chair legs and things like that. But you're, just, you're going to crash into stuff in your house. It's inevitable. But this one has a few less features versus the US 65. And um, let's just get into it right away. I, I think that for beginners, the QX 65 is a better choice, mainly because it's a better value. It's $49.99 versus the $70 that this one is, uh, $75 right now. And this one's actually pushed back till November 29th. Um, 2018 in stock. So right now this one is completely sold out and they're getting more stock in, but it's going to be uh, a little over 10 days before that happens. However, this one, in my opinion, if you're a new guy, new people tend to bang on the sticks a little more than somebody who's more experienced. And if you're more experienced, you know to use hairline throttle measurements, movements as you're flying with a brushless whoop because just a little bit of throttle gives you a lot of punch and then you're not looking for that when you're trying to do a straight line if you're kind of racing other people or just kind of racing in general you want a, a nice fast video with really nice straight lines around your course in your house you want very minimal throttle inputs on this one this one is going to be a little more forgiving because you're going to be able to punch the throttle a little more and it's just going to barely rise up and down as you go and just has a little more flow around the race course than something like the brushless. Now the brushless choice, in my opinion, if you're a more experienced flyer, by all means, get a US 65. If you're a newer flyer, or if you just want something that's a little more tame than the US 65, the QX 65 is the way to go. Um, I was getting much cleaner lines, and I'm actually able to fly under smaller obstacles on the ground, like my skateboard that was sitting on the ground. That was kind of a, uh, uh, run at it and slide under it kind of sort of uh, maneuver that you had to do to get under the skateboard and with this one I didn't feel like I had that much control because mainly because I was going so fast that I didn't really have time to react to something that small so smaller obstacles with this one are going to be a lot harder uh, whereas this one I might have been going a little bit slower but I had way more control so um, a big thing to think about speed versus control so um, unless you're used to flying higher speeds and you have that uh, lightning fast reaction, this one's not bad. This one is great. A lot of people like it a lot, but for probably more control and um, something easier right out of the, the gates, this one is going to be the better choice for you. And I, I, honestly, I think it's a, a little bit better value too, because this one actually comes with, uh, I believe, five different batteries. Um, my kit came with five. It shows on the website that it comes with three, but it also comes with extra props, a screwdriver, and it does come with this little USB charger as well. And it comes with the full-size 
charger that is very similar to the one you see here on the screen that came with the US 65. It's just a different outside shell cover and um, you can charge up to six batteries at once with that. That's a really awesome little charger. Now on the website right here, I can just show you, it says $49.99 right now, and it does come with a few different receiver choices. You can get the DSM-2, DSM-X for Spectrum guys. This is built right into the receiver. Um, the receiver is built right into the flight controller. So F3 flight controller, that's the B-Core 2.0 flight controller that this one comes with. You also have the choice of FlySky and FR Sky, which I have, and they don't have the advanced or the standard version available anymore, just the basic version, but um, also has OSD on board, which is great. The OSD is configurable inside Betaflight, and this is a 65 millimeter whoop, so it's the exact same size as the US 65. It's 20 grams without the battery, 26 grams with the battery. Um, and that's the HV battery that comes along with it. It's so 1S HV, 250 milliamp per hour battery. And there it is right there. It's rated up to about 60 C. And good news for you guys is that the flight time on the QX65, I think might have been a little bit longer. I was getting past four minutes with this particular quad. So uh, really awesome that a tiny whoop gets around four minutes because two years ago we were getting like one minute. So this is a huge upgrade compared to where we used to be with tiny whoops. Now, another thing to note about this one, and I already showed you, it's pretty clear and obvious that this plastic on this frame on the US 65 is super brittle. It's gonna break all the pieces. This is the first day of operation right here, compared to the first day of operation with QX65. Now, this is different than the Darlin frames. Um, the Darlin frames made by Beta FPV, they're gonna be more durable if you wanted to swap the parts over from this one to a beta FPV frame, you could do that. I will also put the link down below for this frame. If you already bought this frame, you can also buy this frame because this one is a little bit cheaper than the beta FPV. And this one's made out of ABS plastic. And I have absolutely had no issues with this. It does flex a little bit, but it's actually way more forgiving and bounces off objects like the wood around, wood around my house and um, harder objects and just bouncing off the skateboard, the floor, chair legs, everything else. And it's totally fine. It didn't have any problems with being brittle. And the canopies almost look exactly the same. You do get a couple extra canopies with this one, which I also think is a great value. You get a white one, I believe you get a yellow one. And they have the same exact three screws here, two on the side and one in the back. You can take this canopy off and bind it. Um, let me go ahead and show you that bind process real quick and then we'll come back after I show you how to bind this one up. It might be good information for you new guys getting into the hobby. So let's go ahead and bind this up with the QX7. After that we'll come back and we'll uh, give you a final opinion on these two. So let me show you guys how to bind up the receiver. Some of you guys will buy this and probably not know this information and you'll have to search for it on the internet. So I'm just gonna make it a little easier. Um, the easiest way to do this is go ahead and pop the canopy off and you'll see the bind button on the board right here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down the bind button like a lot of the same procedure as a lot of other quadcopters to bind up. Um, so we're gonna plug in the battery and hold down the button at the same time. And it's kind of tricky, but you can do it. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the X7 and Welcome we'll get past these screens. TX. If you're using an X7, you can kind of follow along Throughout with these the instructions. It's pretty easy. I'm just gonna use the same setup I had here for the US 65. I'm gonna hit that middle button right there on the transmitter. And the next thing I'm gonna do is page over to the first screen. Now move the dial wheel to the left and that'll take you to the very bottom straight down to where your receiver setup mode is gonna be. Go ahead and make that D8 with the selection wheel. And you're going to go down to bind, select bind right there. The radio will start beeping and now we can bind it up. So I'm just going to hold this part down with my thumb and plug in the battery at the same time if I can do that. And it should go solid once it's bound. And you might have to hold it away from your transmitter just a few feet for this to work right. I'm going to keep holding that button until it goes solid. If the lights don't go solid the first time you try it, go ahead and try it again. Press down with your thumb and plug in the battery. These little plugs are kind of hard. 
So now it's changing colors back to solid. So it immediately bound and now it should be bound up and I can go inside Betaflight now and I can check out my stick directions in the channel mixer. So very important to go in there and make sure that everything is all set up correctly. And now we can also set up our mode switches as well. All right, welcome back guys. Let's go ahead and give you a final opinion on this one and let's give it a star rating on a few different levels like I like to do for you guys. Number one, fun factor. It's gonna be five out of five for the fun factor on this one. If you get this one, you're gonna have fun with it. And like I said, I think it's a better value, $49.99 and um, the $75 price of this one. The fun is just about as equal. It might be a little more fun for me as far as this one goes, but um, the next rating will be the durability rating. So um, I didn't give this one a durability rating in the last review that I, I did on this one, I forgot, but the durability rating on this one might be somewhere around a 3.0. Uh, very, very extremely low durability rating for this particular frame. It's brittle, it's gonna break, and um, it's gonna really kind of make you mad when it does that. So especially if you, this happens on your first day, and this is what you might have happen if, if you're a new pilot. Now durability factor for this one is obviously at five out of five. I had nothing on here break. Not even some of the smaller connection points inside the prop guards. Everything is intact here. Nothing on this machine broke, which I find awesome. So definitely a five out of five. So two five star scores already for the QX65, which is um, way above this one so far. Um, let's talk about an overall rating. I believe I rated this one about a 4.6 and the total rating for this one is gonna be 4.9, um, mainly for everything all together. This is a complete package, all in one package with a 25 milliwatt VTX on here, 700 TVL camera. It is a CMOS camera with about 160 degree field of view. Uh, and it's just as good of a camera as what's on here, minus this one has smart audio. So this one you can change your PID profiles and all that stuff, which is super awesome for more advanced flyers and guys that want to do um, more tuning or say you wanna change a band, you don't have to press the button inside this one. There's a button right behind the VTX right there, right on the very top of the VTX, kind of hard to see. But this one, you would have to do it yourself, um, maybe with a screwdriver or something. You could see that button in there. You can press that and change the channels and bands. That's the only drawback I see is that the further options with this one versus the brushless versus the brushed version. These motors are coreless and they say that they, they do go out more often. Uh, but again, this one's also plug and play. So there's a lot of pros and cons versus these two. Um, if you start out with this one, you will absolutely have a blast. And you might be a better pilot if you start out with this one and work your way up to a brushless whoop. So I know the, the hype is huge on brushless whoops right now. 1S, 2S, everybody wants to have 2S brushless whoop. But that's for the guys who've been around and flying for several years. And 2S craze is crazy right now, but um, it's raining and it's snowy outside, so why not rock some 1S indoors? Because the 1S batteries are way cheaper and you can buy more of them in bulk and uh, you can also charge more of them at a time over there with these little multi-chargers, which I really like a lot. Those are also switchable between HV batteries and regular batteries. HV being 4.35 and regular LiPo being 4.20. If you want to have these HV batteries last longer, you can charge them at 4.20. You're gonna get about three minutes flight time on that particular charge rate. If you charge it as an HV up to 4.35 volt, you're gonna get about four, almost four and a half minutes flight time out of this battery. So um, very awesome that we're in 2018 and we're finally getting to the point where things are just uh, giving us a really nice, satisfying, and long flight time on a single 1S battery. It's kind of crazy. Four minutes on a 250 milliamp per hour battery is um, kind of unheard of. So I think it's a, a great buy. So $49, bind it up to your radio, put on your goggles and go rip. Uh, but I, I think this has been a pretty honest comparison of the two. I showed you guys flight footage from both whoops. And like I said, this one is definitely faster. 
Uh, but for indoors, to start out with, you really don't need all of that speed unless you're a more of an advanced flyer. So uh, a lot of the reviewers said it was the best whoop ever. And uh, that's, that's debatable for me um, and for a lot of reasons. And um, I've already gone over most of those reasons for you. But the QX65 is a solid bet for anybody just getting into the hobby. And that's, that's my 100% honest opinion for you guys. So um, hopefully you appreciate these honest reviews. And down below, if you'd like to get entered into win the Tiny Hawk, please do make a comment below on this video because December 2nd is coming up quick. And I'm going to give away that Emacs Tiny Hawk to some lucky guy on the channel. Guy or girl is going to win it, and I'm going to ship it to your door. So I appreciate you guys watching all these honest reviews, guys. If you want to help me out on my Patreon, I would super, super be stoked if you joined up to help me out with that. And I'll keep the honest reviews coming. Thanks again for watching, you guys. I'm Justin Davis. Peace out, guys. I'll see you on the next one.